In this video, I'm gonna share with you six web design trends that I believe are going to absolutely dominate the year 2024. Now, by the end of this video, you're gonna know all of these trends and it's going to help you be more well-equipped to have a great year in 2024 and deliver fantastic work to your clients. So let's get into it. The first web design trend is the dark mode website made popular this last year by Linear. This Linear website was everywhere and designers all across the world were copying this style because it looks so good. Now, there are a number of different reasons why I love a dark mode website. Number one, it's easy on the eyes. It's easy to consume. It's easy to read the content. Number two is it always looks really clean, clear, and professional. And it has a bit of a serious tone, which I think works really, really well for a lot of websites. Now, one thing we've learned in this past year is dark mode doesn't just mean a black background. You can use a variety or combination of different dark colors to create really nice background gradients and highlights and glows to really bring your website to life. So these dark mode websites are here to stay and I don't see this trend going anywhere anytime soon. The second web design trend that's growing like a wildfire right now is the use of the bento grid. Now my favorite part about these bento grids is they always look really organized. They look uniform. It's easy to align them. If you ever have any question on how to lay out your website, just go with a bento grid. I've been loving all the examples that I've seen in these past months of great uses of the bento grid. And I really think that this trend is going to stick around for a long time. And in a lot of ways, I feel like we're still on the front end of this trend. And so I think in this coming year, we're going to see a lot of really cool examples using the bento grid. Now, while there is a lot of upsides to using this type of grid, I also think there are a few downsides. The biggest downside being that it can really easily get out of control and start to feel overwhelming. It feels like a messy desk if you have too much going on. And so you just want to make sure that you use this sparingly and that you don't overwhelm the user. The third trend that I think we're going to see a lot of is a heavier use of AI generated imagery. Now the visual assets of any website are the most important part because people are much more likely to look at an image or a video or an animation than they are to actually read the text. Now up until this point, it's been really difficult to create custom imagery and stock photos are really expensive. So the rise of AI and these new AI design tools are really changing the way that we design websites because you can virtually create any type of image that you want and it's pretty much free. If you want an image of a blue dog wearing a Santa hat, no problem, you got it. So I think it's going to be important for us as designers to learn how to utilize these AI tools. Tools like Adobe Firefly and Midjourney, these are gonna be great places to start. Now the fourth web design trend that I'm actually not a huge fan of is this extreme stimulation or scrapbook style. So you've probably started to see some examples of this, but it basically just looks like a train wreck. I think us as designers are getting a little too loosey-goosey with things, and we're starting to break rules that probably shouldn't be broken. So things like alignment and organization are completely out the window. And so these scrapbook style websites are pretty much just a ton of different elements scattered across the page. Now there probably is a right time and place for the style, but I think in most cases, especially in a professional setting, this is not going to be the direction that you wanna take. But if it's for a personal project or some type of creative business, this might be a fun way to make a unique website that people have never seen before. The fifth web design trend that I'm actually pretty in love with right now is just the use of vibrant gradients. I think gradients almost always elevate a website and they're a great way to use up space, give the site some depth, and if you don't wanna have to figure out how to create custom assets or find stock photos or videos, a nice gradient can actually fill a space without needing more specific imagery. These vibrant gradients work really well as a backdrop for your website and it doesn't distract or take away from the text, but it gives it that additional depth that you need to make it feel like a really professional site. Now there are actually a ton of free websites out there that will help you customize and create your own gradients. And this can also be done in basically any design or development tool. So if you haven't been yet, I would definitely recommend diving in and learning how to create professional looking gradients. Now the sixth and final web design trend that I think is going to be huge in the year 2024 
is this trend of massive typography. Now, this isn't something new. This has been around for a few years, but I am noticing a lot of websites going this direction of having massive text. Now, this is another example of maybe breaking some conventions or, or the way that people are used to seeing a website, but I'm actually a really big fan of this because it requires us as the designer and the developer to really choose carefully what text we wanna have on the website. Because if all of our typography is massive, we can't have a ton of content. So we have to choose our words very carefully to get our point across. So the reason I'm a big fan of these is they're really easy to consume. It's easy to see exactly what the website's talking about, what the company does, and it's really to the point. The other reason that I love this huge typography is it takes up so much space that you don't need to rely as much on the visual assets. So you don't need as many images, as many animations, as many videos you can rely more on your typography, and certainly this is going to work way better if you have a unique or custom font. So I'm wondering, from these six trends, which one is your favorite, and which one do you think we're going to regret the most five years down the road? Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one, and we'll catch you in the next one.